First, gratuitous product placement. <laughs> Arts, crafts, stories, pretzels, and now drinking water. Drinking water, a simple product, a necessity of life in an ever increasingly crowded planet. The evolution of drinking water through the industrial revolution and beyond. This is a story of how we've crafted your drinking water for two centuries. The largest manufacturer in South Central Pennsylvania, pound for pound, is the York Water Company. It has been so for the past 200 years. We deliver to your household over a half ton of our finely crafted product each and every day. Every gallon is delivered right to where you need it, and every gallon is healthy and refreshing. Because we do this, you don't have to. Many parts of the world, people, mostly women, spend three to four hours of their day getting water into their homes. Because we deliver the product to you, you have more time to engage in other productive activities. So this story is about the craft of how we've made that water safe to drink and delivered it to your house so you can come here tonight. Mm -hmm. Although we've uh, apparently had bread for 30,000 years, humans have been around for 250,000 years. For 249,500 of those years, we simply scooped the water out of the stream, lake, or shallow well. A mere 500 years ago, we started using simple hand pumps, as symbolized by the center of our company logo. As humans, humans urbanized in the late 1700s, they left their farms, again, a shallow well, a nearby stream, or a pond, and began the migration to the cities. If you were a typical city dweller up until the early 1800s, you probably got your water, got your shoes on, went down to the town well and got water. If you were well-to-do, you got your shoes on, went in the backyard and got, well from, got water from your well. As cities like York got more crowded, this created a sanitary nightmare. As people threw the contents of their chamber pots, their kitchen waste, the byproducts of their industry, out into the streets or into nearby streams to either flow down to the next town or infiltrate into a local well. The first city on the planet to entirely pipe their water system was Paisley, Scotland. I've worn my Paisley tie in honor of this fine little town. <laughs> Just 12 years later, that was in 1804, 12 years later in 1816, the York Water Company was formed by a group of local business leaders incorporated by the legislator, and we began to bore out wooden logs to pipe up our own town. Although initially designed for fire protection, like the top picture here, uh, this scene on West Market Street, many an inhabitant watched the wooden logs get buried in front of their dwellings and realized that one, the water was a lot closer than the town well, Two, since it came from a spring, it seemed to taste better. And three, it was pressurized, so no more pumping. By the end of the first year, there were 116 customers. This, my friends, was the cutting edge of technology. Water delivered right to your house by a wooden pipe, a spigot in your front yard, and pressurized water. Although it would be closer to another 100 years before we figured out an economical way to get the wastewater out of your house. So what have we done? For the first 249,850 years of human existence, we just scooped water out of the ground and drank it. We often got ill and even died because of this, and we had no idea why. Although we didn't know this, uh, although we didn't know why, in fact, uh, since the beginning of human existence, mostly due to waterborne disease, life expectancy was about 30 years old. It wasn't until 1854 when Dr. John Snow in London made this connection between waterborne disease and contaminated water, here at the Broad Street Pump in London. Uh, discovered that cholera and typhoid were connected to the water. Although it would be another 50 years before we all figured that out and understood what Dr. Snow was trying to tell us. At the same time in 1850, here in York, newspapers did report on cholera outbreaks, although we didn't know why, but we mostly just needed more water. Now, our spring on Rathen Road was too small, so we built a pump station on the Cadoris Creek at Penn Street, just upstream of the city. At the time, a nice, clean source of water. Then, in 1864, a paper mill was constructed in Spring Grove. In the 1880s, the paper mill installed the world's largest machine to make paper in the world. Of course, the largest machine to make paper in the world also generated the largest amount of waste. By the late 1880s, this began causing complaints from our customers here in the city of York who didn't appreciate this new and unique flavor to their water. <laughs> so, in the 1890s, the only way to deal with a distasteful water was to avoid it. Uh, a new steam-powered pumping station was built on the south branch of the Cadoris Creek, just upstream of the west branch. A site selected because one, it was on clean water supply, two, it was close to the users, and three, it was on a railroad siding so we could get uh, coal in to run the steam engines. That pump station is still in use today. For a short period of time in the 1890s, it was thought that aeration and settling would clean our water. So we built two huge reservoirs on the hill south of York, pumped water up the hill, and aerated it. It was quickly discovered, however, that this did not eliminate the outbreaks of cholera and typhoid. 
The fountain was replaced by a gazebo in 1932. The reservoirs are still there. In New York, as in other cities, cholera outbreaks were still common, and finally in the 1890s was established by George Warren Fuller, an engineer from New York City, that filtration greatly reduced these outbreaks. So we had Mr. Fuller come to York and build us a filter plant. So it was just over 100 years ago that we finally moved beyond scooping water out of a stream and drinking it. We actually filtered the water. Although we found that this was a great improvement, it was not perfect. We still had cholera and typhoid outbreaks. Then, in Jersey City, in 1908, Mr. Fuller, that same Mr. Fuller, added a small amount of chlorine to the water. Although at the time there was a great debate about uh, adding a toxic chemical to the drinking water, which would then add to our bodies. It turned out to be the missing piece of our craft. So one, find a clean source of water. Two, filter it. Three, add chlorine. And four, deliver it to our customers. At the same time, we finally figured out how to remove wastewater from our houses. And things really turned around. This was the golden era of public health. And thanks in large part to how we craft our water, uh, in little over a century, our life expectancy went from 30 years to over 80 years. We just recently crossed the point where most of the planet now lives in cities and water will continue to present challenges. But we have over 100 men and women at the York Water Company that purify and deliver our product every day. So again, you don't have to spend three hours hauling water. These folks and their predecessors over the past 200 years have contributed greatly to doubling our lifespans so that hopefully we can spend that extra 30 or 40 years enjoying arts, crafts, music, learning, and warm bread and cold beer. Thank you.